All right, so we are back to the code and now we're going to start applying the concepts that we've been talking to uh, on, on R. So the first thing is to read vectorial maps. How do we read vectorial maps? Well, here I uh, included um, a web page where you can download vectorial maps. They are mm, basically physical uh, vectors of, uh, of the global Earth, so you can find the coastal barriers. Um, the packages we're going to use are the, these three. Um, I have already installed them, but um, feel free to install them and then log them into the session. There are several ways to read vectorial maps. I, I just include three of them here. Um, there's this one. My personal preference is the second one. There's this three, third one that I just put them in a common. So in the first one, which is, which is using this, um, this function right here, the projection needs to be specified previously. So here is where I, what I am doing. I'm just saying that um, um, I'm using the projection long lat, which is longitude latitude um, WGS84. So I have to put this between commas and using um, this particular function here. So this is going to be the projection. And when I'm reading the map, what I have to do is to specify where this map is located in your computer and then specify what projection do you want it to be. So you'll have that map here. It's giving me a warming, it's just information, but everything worked fine. And my personal, personal preference is this one where you don't even have to specify the projection. So it's going to be read by the package itself. Uh, you only have to specify the, the, the route uh, from your computer. You use this, it gives you some information what it has read, what it includes. And then I'm just going to plot, just type plot in the map you want to plot, then you're going to see how this map looks like. You see this is um, the, the boundaries of the ground. And then we move on to raster maps. Um, this is pretty simple. The, the king or the best personal preference, but the best package to to use rasters is the uh, the package raster. So you can use it for um, like to manage all everything you need from rasters. Just gonna load it into the session, and it's as easy to just to put raster here and the route of your of your map. I'm gonna charge a temperature map that I've taken from um, from WorldClim, uh, and it's in 10 minutes resolution. Just gonna see how it looks like. And this is how by default the map is created. Also, if you feel like magnifying your map, you can just click on zoom here and this is gonna pop out in an outside window so you will be able to see it bigger. Um, and then there's a particular way of displaying maps which is using NC format, which is when you are working on time series maps. Just because the maps are pretty heavy uh, data. Um, this is a particular way to store time series um, in a pretty efficient way. But that makes it a little tricky to work with. So that's, uh, I'm just going to show you how to do that. I'm going to clean my environment to not be distracting. These are the packages you're going to need to go through this code. Just going to load them all. And this is a map that I have obtained based on this uh, reference here. You, if you click on, the, on that link, it, you, you would be able to download this information from the internet. It's a nitrogen deposition map that goes from, if I remind correctly, from 1901 to 2020 or something like that. So every time to time there is a map, so that's why it's a time series. So you have to picture, let's say, a book and each page of the book is a map, so you have them all together and they are all the same size, the same resolution, but you have uh, a repetition in time of the same map. Okay, first of all is to open the file, so a NC open where the map is, take the map, and if that would be uh, a raster, you would be able to plot it right away, so that's what I try here. No worries, it's not going to work, but it's just to 
show you that it's a different way of organizing maps. So how do we do it to, to extract it and to convert it into a map we can see, we can visualize, we can understand? The first thing we need to do is to see what are the names of the dimension of the map. Just click names, the map and dimensions. And this is going to return the three dimensions that we need to know, which is the longitude, the latitude, and the time. But sometimes the authors name these variables differently. So here is long lat, but it could be longitude, latitude, or time could be years, or things like that. So that's why we need to make sure how this is named. So we're going to extract the longitude. Here is where we get the map structure. Have longitude. Uh, we are variable get the longitude. OK, and we store it in a vector. Here we want to extract the latitude. We repeat the same, but with latitude instead. And here we are extracting the information requ uh, related to the time. And what now we see that the latitude so is cut in th 360 different columns or rows, and the longitude likewise, but uh, 720. And then we want to get the actual information. So what's the content of the cells? So we do this like that. So here is the content. Something else we need to take into account is the NA values. So when creating uh, a map, um, there is a value that you use to name your NAs. Sometimes it's NA right away, but some other people use numbers like 9999 or just a big number. And here what we are doing is to explore how the authors have named this NA value. So this is one I want to see. Just to be, I'm curious, but this is the big number they named as missing value. So to avoid this number to mess with our results, um, I recommend you to change it to NA. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm replacing every number that looks like this to an NA. Don't worry that you are not going to knock out important data. It's just mostly going to be NAs. So we ran this, this chunk of code. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. Now it should go. It's taking a while because there's a lot of data. And while, oh yeah, here we have it. So now all the NAs would be replaced into NA value. And now we no longer need to have opened the map, so we can close it. It doesn't occupy space in our, um, in our session. Just close it because we already have the information we need. And how are we are going to transform this information we have in different chunks into an organized map that we can actually visualize and work with? Um, first of all, um, here I'm going to run an example. I'm just going to use the, mm, the package raster right here. Mm -mm -mm. I need to include this T here, which means transpose, um, because otherwise if I don't put transpose, the image would look flipped. Um, then this is the object. These are the different dimensions, longitude, latitude, and this number one is going to be the first time frame. So I'm going to just get the first um, map that we have. Um, then it asks us for the minimum uh, of the x-axis. I'm going to put the minimum of the longitude, the maximum of the longitude, and just ba basically setting up the form of, like the format of this raster map. As uh, you have to specify as well the projection. So this is going to be the projection. That th it's the same that we've used uh, before in other maps. And we just run this chunk of code. And we can plot our results. This is how the map looks like. Uh, this is the nitrogen deposition in, uh, I believe, in 1901. And it includes also the sea. So that's why it looks like um, it doesn't look like the Earth that we're used to. And then how can we store this information in our computer? How can we write? these raster. So it's just as easy as write, write raster, put the name of the file we want to store, file name, and your route as follows. 
Now we are moving to the resolution. And if you, you might have paid attention when downloading the data from the world claim that it allows you to download the maps in different resolutions. But in order to name the different resolutions world claim, it uses um, time. So why is that? Well, actually, you could face three different ways to approach resolution. The first of all is the surface using uh, the surface square. One example would be this one kilometer square that refers to the map when we have it in a representation, uh, in a gridded representation, we would uh, have each side of the grid um, calculated by the surface that's occupying. So you just take this, that's one kilometer, and that's one kilometer. The problem of, the, of this approach is that it's not always accurate because the the, the, the part of the grid that's closer to the equator it's s smaller than the one that it goes to the pole so it's kinda, it kind of shreds when it goes to the edges and so that makes that this one kilometer is not consistent throughout the whole map and to kind of overcome this problem it came with the angle or the time approach which treats the earth as a, a round surface this is not perfect because the the round is not 100% perfect, but it's better than using the surface. So what they do is to consider on one time, on one side, the angle that this opening is. So just let's take this square right here and let's just plot it on top of this. So the the angle that covers this part of the surface that would be displayed in the angle, or also the time that the Earth needs to rotate and cover this amount of surface. So for you to have a reference, for example, one kilometer square resolution would be uh, the same as 30 seconds uh, in time. So going back to the code, here I downloaded two different resolutions uh, for the temperature maps on, on WorldClim. One is the 10, mi 10 minutes and the other one is the 30 seconds. Um, the 10 minutes is okay to download, the 30 seconds it might take a while. Um, if your internet connection is low, um, you can just believe what I'm saying, but if you want to try it out, obviously feel free. Um, just to remind you how the map looks like, it's going to look like this. Um, let's just check the resolution here um, on both maps. Here we have this number here, but what does it mean? We ha here we have this other number here. So when we consult the resolution in our maps, it's going to be showed in degrees. So using the angle approach um, that I previously mentioned. So how can we change resolution in a map? Uh, we can use the factor aggregate. So if we have a number that's bigger than one, we are going to combine cells. So if we have, in this case, I'm combining um, in a factor of four, meaning that four cells horizontal and four cells vertical are going to be combined in one. Uh, there are different ways to calculate the resultant cell. So it could be using the mode or it could be using the mean, depending on what kind of data you have in your map. Uh, but you could also um, May increase your make increase your resolution by using a number that's lower than one. So let's say if you put a let's say 0 0.5, you are gonna divide a cell in four because we are we are looking in like we're working in two dimensions. Um, I mean this is technically correct, but conceptually don't really makes a lot of sense because you are creating fake data. It's not that you are actually including the resolution of how good you are approaching reality. You are just creating more data for no more accuracy. So in this case, I'm going to aggregate the map that we have in a factor of four. And I'm just going to consul consult how the resolution has changed. So initially, I aggregated this one. This was the initial resolution. And once the resolution was changed, you see, the degrees has gone bigger because the surface is bigger, so the time or the degree to cover that surface is bigger. So if you plot that, you might be able to see that 
the quality of the, the image is a little worse.